lawful lay aside every weight and the sin that clings so closely. And let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, pioneer and protector of our faith, who for the sake of the joy that was set before him endured the cross, disregarding the shame, and has taken his seat at the right hand of the throne of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. is we are family, based on Ephesians 2.19. You are no longer foreigners or outsiders, but citizens, together with God's people and members of God's family. St. Paul's Presbyterian Church is like many families. We know how to celebrate, like the christening of a new baby, celebrating our young folks as they are confirmed in church, or graduating from high school, or getting married in our sanctuary. We all know how to stand together through good times and not so good times. Through the ups and downs of our church's life and our church members, we prop each other up and look to Jesus for guidance. And like all families, we have strong family groups. Today, we're going to take a look at those groups. Fifteen people that went down to a Presbyterian meeting and told them we'd like to start a church in Johnston, which was a little different, I think, because uh, normally Presbyterian thinks, well, this would be a good place to establish a church, and then they go about doing it. And if I remember right, uh, Grant Voorhees was our spokesman down there. And he and his wife were very active in getting the church started. When we first started, we didn't have a building or anything, so we had a Sunday school in homes around here close by. And our church service was held in the Lions Club, which was an old building that uh, has since been torn down and the new one built. It was a bit crowded, but uh, it was fun. Joyce Army's basement, which is across the street from the Lions Club. 
I don't class met in Rand Mar Margaret Gordon's house just to the north of that before we had anything done at the Lions Club. So I taught in the basement and I had three or four year olds, angels, all of them, good kids. And then we moved to the, they made a room in the old Lions Club downstairs in the basement for the little kids' classroom. And they kind of built it around the furnace room and it was not so deep and not kind of grubby. So it wasn't quite as much fun as the basement of Joyce Arley's house. So that's where I started and that's, I stayed teaching Sunday school for probably 10 years before I got, on to, got out of it. I was teaching all the time. Real dedication. First of all, teaching three or four year olds, and then teaching them in the basement of the nearby home or in the basement of the Lions Club. But even to this day, even to this day, Jean Miller still says they were all angels. Hmm, I wonder if she would have said that if my son had been there. <laughs> Church, we met at the home of Grant and Margaret Gordon, who were very instrumental in starting this church. And we were trying to decide on a name for the church, and they were down to between Trinity or St. Paul. Well, we were kind of tied in our vote. And I believe it was the Vex. Margaret and Jason came in a little bit late, and they voted for St. Paul. So that's how we got our name. Church's General Assembly. When 
so about two years after that, it was either 62 or 63, that the National Assembly was held here in Des Moines, and they had uh, the, the barn, Veterans Auditorium, rented for that. And I happened to be the first layman on the program at that assembly, and I presented the clerk of General Assembly with a gavel to use to preside over the General Assembly meeting here that was made out of one of the old pieces from the sanctuary. So the gavel they used in that uh, assembly was from our church. church clean and all that sort of thing. And uh, I don't know, there always seemed to be somebody there that was willing to do the things that needed to be done. Ongoing mission work continues. 
continue and expand it. Habitat for Humanity, the Hunger Hut, and our Harvest Dinner. Just last week, we again held our Harvest Dinner, and over 150 people from our community enjoyed the meal with us. As Pastor Gilmore said in an article shown here, God calls us to be a welcoming arm. And the most loving and hospitable of acts we can offer is to share a meal with others. To share our fall hearted meal is to share our faith. In 1997, our church stepped up its commitment to our youth and children by hiring its first ever youth director, Ed Weigel. The commitment to locals and to our church included our local program, mission trips, community service projects, Valentine's Day dinners, and Christmas programs. I seem to recall one Christmas program where the high school students sang We Three Kings to a rap song <laughs> while they were wearing their sunglasses. Sure, I'm glad none of my kids were involved in that. Oh, wait, maybe they were. <laughs> Our church saw a need in our community for fresh programming and, and started our community garden. Our entire church family, young and old alike, worked on this effort. We grow vegetables that are distributed to families in our community through the Johnson Food Center. Can you believe we have had a community garden for 15 years? In 2004, we again added to our church campus. Improvements included adding the Family Activity Center. Constructing handicap accessible restrooms, installing a raised platform, our pews, our lighting, and our carpentry, and our sanctuary. We also installed a much needed bright new roof. Total cost of these improvements was a little more than $1 million. And one of our challenges today is to stay current on these mortgage payments. For the past 10 years, we church members have made a separate pledge to the building fund. But in 2016, we are all going to have to step forward financially as we roll the building fund into the general fund. But isn't it totally worth it? Here you see the Kohati Indian dancers who gave a performance in our family activity center to over 100 community members. Many community and church groups make extensive use of our family activity center at very reasonable cost, including Voice Out Troop 44, Daisy troops, sports teams, doggy play games, many youth activities and logos, just to name a few. And in 2009, our older somewhat <coughs> unsafe playground was replaced with a really cool new playground, and the kids love it. After 21 years of faithful pastoral service, Reverend Gilmore retired in, two, in March 2012. Even while our congregation started the search process for a new minister, our church family continued its ministry. Here you see pictures of our congregation working on meals for the heart of And in August of 2013, Reverend Bill O'Connell began his ministry at St. Paul. We love his energy and his can-do attitude. It is so contagious. Pastor Bill has pioneered many new programs, Disciple, Women's Public Bible Study, and our alternative gift card, to just mention a few. <coughs> Early in Pastor Bill's ministry, we set out to establish a new vision for our church family's future, relying on a congressional, I did that again, on congregational surveys, the latest demographics, and Bible studies. Almost 70 church members of all ages gathered in small groups to revision our future together. Two weeks from now, Brent Johnson and Donald Coffin will talk more about what has been accomplished and what remains to be done. And next week, we will hear from some of our church members on what our St. Paul church family means to them. I hope you have enjoyed the celebration of our church's family path. During our time after worship in Fellowship Hall, we invite you to take the time to look through some of the nine albums that Gene Gilbert has so lovingly over here, documenting our church family's history. Also, a special thanks to Sarah Johnson for helping us with the technology and putting together this slideshow. As we read earlier in 2012, 
We are indeed surrounded by a cloud of witnesses. Men and women who founded and provided a strong work of our church's family tree. As we have seen, hard work, dedication, commitment, and sacrifice through thick and thin are the hallmarks of St. Paul Presbyterian Church. It is our job to carry on in the same manner. With God's help, let us also run with perseverance the race that is set before us, continuing to build up our church family on the strong foundation we have been given. Thank you, Patty. We're going to stand for our response to him. 360.